In this video, we're going to look at the force of friction. In the last video, we saw that forces can be broken down into two categories, contact forces and non-contact forces. Friction is an example of a contact force, so the two objects need to be touching for the force to occur. Friction occurs when two objects move past each other and it causes the objects to slow down and to produce heat. This is why the opening slide had a picture of two men rubbing sticks together to create fire. So the friction from the sticks rubbing together created heat, and that heat can be used to make fire. Friction as a force also always works in the opposite direction to that that something's moving, or the opposite direction to motion. For this reason, we say that it opposes motion, so it works opposite to motion. In this example, you can see this box, the motion is moving it to the right. Therefore, friction will pull on it to the left and slow it down. It's a bit hard to visualize, but friction also occurs in the air and in water. Now, because you can't see air, you can't see the air in contact with the object causing it to slow down but the air is there and this air friction we use the word drag to describe it. The reason we get friction between objects is because of the microscopic bumps on the two surfaces. So they look smooth but there's actually on a microscopic level little tiny bumps and those bumps grind on each other and cause an object to slow down. Friction is a double-edged sword. Sometimes friction can be useful and we want more of it and sometimes it can be a hindrance or not useful so we want to reduce it as much as we can. Some cases where we want to increase friction is for example walking on ice which is quite slippery. We can use ice shoes or on the road where we want to stay gripped to the road so we go around a corner safely. We have tread on our tyres which increases the amount of friction. Or when playing rugby we want to increase the amount of friction between our feet and the ground so we wear studs on our boots that increase that friction and give us more grip. In other places we want to decrease friction. So, for example, in a bike, in the axle of your bike and the chain in your bike, where the parts are rubbing against each other, we want to decrease that friction as much as possible. So, we use oil or lubricant to fill in the microscopic gaps and make the surfaces a bit smoother. Another thing that we can do to decrease the amount of friction is rather than just dragging an object along the ground, we can put wheels on the object. Because the wheels roll rather than drag, it means that the amount of friction caused by the object is much less.